books. That's kind of the, the, the background as to why we decided to do that. I guess it's a little bit self-centered in some ways. But for some more proper motivation, this is a graph of information in visual analytics books with year on the x-axis and then frequency or volume on the y-axis. This is the, the traditional kind of motivation behind these kinds of things is the rapid growth in the number of books. So the number of information visualization and visual analytics books is growing very, very rapidly. This graph is out of date. And if, if it was up to date, then we'd have two more big bars here, including 2018 and already a number of books in 2019. So that's one of the motivations behind this survey. We do know that books are often cited in survey papers and in research papers. Right? They're a great contribution to the community. They're not limited in their page length necessarily the same way research papers are. So there's no artificial eight page limit or nine page limits. Therefore, they can go into a lot greater depth and breadth on any given topic. And anybody that's published a book, I guess a lot of people in this audience have published books, there's a, a very, very uh, noteworthy investment of time and effort put into these books. So, for example, I asked Alfred Inselberg how long it took him to write his Parallel Coordinates book. Probably a lot of you have seen this book. It's quite an impressive book. It has over 400 figures in it, and it goes into a lot of detail. He told me it was, he worked on it for five years. I, I could imagine he was being conservative with that estimate. Uh, another example is uh, Hammond Samet's book. I don't know if anybody here has seen Hammond Samet's latest book on spatial data structures. Has anybody here seen that? <laughs> Did you ask him how long it took him? Like, the book is so crazy, I, I, I saw it, I'm like, oh my gosh, what's this? Like, how long did it take you to write this? That was the first question out of my mouth, and he said 10 years. So it's, it's a serious investment. And the Survey of Surveys is already published for information visualization. So, some contributions. This is the first survey of its kind that we know of for information visualization books. It includes the, the visual analytics books. We also contributed a novel two-level classification. The, the, one of the dimensions is readership, the target readership audience, and the other dimension of the classification is subject area. We also provide guidance. <laughs> Guidance uh, on and guidelines <laughs> on who the books could be read by or what, what books you might be interested in. And we offer a, a lot of valuable metadata that helps compare the books with each other in different landscapes like citations, figures, pages, volumes, and lots of other things. So, some of the challenges associated with this kind of a survey, the search methodology is not necessarily the standard search methodology that you would use for a standard survey paper that includes research papers. The cost is a factor. So we spent some money on this. And the volume is a factor. So there are more than 23,000 pages represented. So that's a nice contribution right there, is just something to help manage that massive volume of the literature in terms of the books. So the cost of such a survey is, is over $3,000. Now that's an estimated cost, right? That's the, the way we calculated the cost was by taking a snapshot of Amazon.com and what the prices were of the books at that time. So the prices are always changing. And in this graph, the, the books are on the x-axis, and the cost is on the y-axis, and then the colors according to different publishers. 
So if I'm going to practice a psychic exercise, somebody's thinking, well, which is the most expensive publisher? <laughs> Well, it's a logical question, and the answer is Springer. And which book is this? Anybody recognize that book? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my fault, I wish this is just the way it is. But there are books that are more expensive than yours, Sylvia, uh, that are not included in this survey, if it's of any help. The, the, the Dranko's books uh, is more expensive, and there's another one. The Handbook of uh, Geospatial Information Visualization is 250 euros. So you have to understand the way Swinger does it is not by selling books, it's actually by selling subscriptions to services. So most universities pay and they get the books for free. Yes, so yes. So that's, that's not representative of what Swinger does. I am very familiar with their pricing policy and how they price their books. And Helen Desmond <coughs> explained it to me in detail. She works for Springer. But thank you. OK, and the search methodology. This is how we searched. I hope we didn't miss anything major. So we searched Amazon, obviously, John Smith's, several different publisher websites, and different <coughs> booksellers. So our, our focus were on books, popular booksellers, and popular publisher websites. Uh, yeah. So the scope was a discussion that we had for quite a long time. What we could include, this was a very tricky aspect, I would say, of the survey, what we could include and what we couldn't include. And I, when we started, we thought we could include everything, but we were very wrong. And so, for example, we thought we could include edited volumes in the beginning, but we quickly discovered there are way too many edited volumes. Another thing we, we rapidly discovered we couldn't include in the scope were the geospatial information, GIS books, geographic information systems books, because there are quite, that would be a separate survey. The edited volumes would be a separate survey. Infographics would also be a separate survey. So the infographics is about essentially um, static presentations like in data journalism. We have to leave out scientific visualization. Now with tools, <coughs> we try to do a compromise. So we, we do have a section called tools, but it's not a comprehensive survey of books on tools. For example, you could do a separate survey of Excel books alone if you wanted to. It wouldn't be very exciting, but there are that many of them. So we have a, we have a few references to the most recent Excel books for those people that want to jumpstart their journey on Excel books, and similarly with a few other tools like D3 and processing and so on. So the main focus is on information visualization visual analytics books. Now the target audience, uh, the target classification is based on target audience. And here is the primary dimension of, of, of the classification. And that's based on the reader. Who, who is the readership? Who is the book targeting at in terms of their reader audience? So we have a group of classic books that I think Everybody in this audience is familiar with, like the Bear Time book. We have general audience books, so those are books that don't require necessarily any background in computer science. Then we have our academic and textbooks, which I think a lot of people in this audience like. We have a class, uh, a set of books that, we, that are targeted specifically at people that are already working full time at a job maybe in finance, for example, and are trying to supplement their skills with visualization. Then we have our specialized topics that don't try to cover all of information visualization, but focus on a special direction, like time. And then we have a few tools. 
that's one of the dimensions. The other dimension, we're going to show the table, but the other dimension is based on the subject area and what, what is discussed in the books. Every book has an introductory chapter, so there's introductory material in every book. And then we have other common themes that occur throughout the books, like data analysis, mapping data, visualization techniques, rendering, interactive, interaction and perception. And this hopefully looks familiar to you. This is, this is you could think of that in terms of the Viz pipeline, the visualization pipeline. And that is a snapshot of the classification table at high resolution. The font is probably too small for everybody to read. But here, here are the books themselves. And these are the different categories of readership, the target audience, like the classics and so on. And then these are the subject classifiers. So introductory topics, data analysis, mapping, visualization techniques, and so on. And that's the hierarchical subject categorization. So in each of those, there's subdivisions. For example, like in introductory material, that's subdivided into visualization history and visualization fu fundamentals and foundations and pipelines, for example. Very common themes in the introductory chapters. And then each entry in the table has a number, and that is the approximate number of pages that are covered on that specific topic. So, for example, in classics and multivariate data, there's a, the Cleveland book from 1993 covers 253 pages on that topic. So there's a color coding, and the color coding is more red the greater the number is. And you can see some outliers in here. For example, I'm trying to find, trying to find your book, Min, on the, the, your book on information theory is here somewhere. I can't remember where the, where the, uh, the theory, the theory is along here, but you'll see a big, big red um, square when you find that book. And so the books are obviously put together, the related ones in common sections. And the chapters are summarized in two sentences. It's a little, it's very anal retentive the way this is written, because I'm very anal retentive. <laughs> and you can you can literally see where you are by looking at the text. So this is, for example, the summary of the Bertin book, and you can actually see, like, okay, the first, the first paragraph is about four sentences, and it covers the first two chapters, and you know which chapter you're on based on the indentation of the text. So I know from I'm on the second paragraph, I'm starting this, this text refers to chapter three of the text. So every indentation refers to an odd chapter text. So you literally know where you are in the book summary and based on the, the shape of the text and the arrangement of the literal text. And then comparisons and recommendations are made at the end of each section regarding the individual books. So just some examples of some of the books that we, we discuss the semiology and graphics. This is one that everybody knows about already, right? And this is a good book if you're interested in history, a historical spec perspective of, of visualization. It's also a book that's very, very rich in imagery. So this is one of the things that makes it such a great book. Is I think everybody in this audience, including myself, loves images, and so that's one of the reasons that's such a great book. The Tufty books are classics as well, and they don't require a computer science background, and that's one of the great, one of the things that makes them so great. There's the Visualizing Data by Cleveland. This is one of the earlier Viz books, and it's written from the perspective of a statistician, so Cleveland is a statistician. So it's very interesting for anybody that wants that stuff, statistician perspective. 
we have a group of general audience books, and these are also these are I, this might be my favorite group actually. <laughs> the functional art, for example, and the the Lima books, <clears throat> like the Book of Trees, for example, and the Book of Circles, are really really great collections of hundreds of examples with vivid imagery and vivid colors and. and vivid examples, very engaging books that, that basically convey every kind of tree imaginable, every kind of circle imaginable, every kind of visual design imaginable. They're for general audiences, they don't require any background in computer science, and they don't necessarily, they're not restricted to interactive visualization as per se, there are different sections on hand-drawn, but there are also computer-generated images. That we're familiar with. Okay, that is part one. I guess we'll save questions and those sorts of things for the end. What do we do that? So, Dylan, take over. Okay, thank you, Bob. So I'm Dylan Brees, and I'm taking over the second part, which predominantly concentrates on uh, metadata, and also helps them uh, discuss some of the other topic, um, some of the other classifications that we uh, that we place the books in. First, we're just going to mention something about the uh, web resource we have, though, and then discuss these more book recommendations. And then this metadata, then we have a graph of influence, which we find quite interesting. Um, some numerical analysis. Discuss a bit about the supplementary material that comes with the books. Um, some Amazon review scores, kind of interesting, if not that relevant. Um, just how the topics are distributed between the books, and some bit more tools, and uh, discuss a bit about future work. So, as I mentioned, that first one that I like the web resource that we use. So, we use um, surveys by Graph um, Beck et al. Shard, sorry. Um, which is just uh, enables us to uh, collect all the books together, so we hold up in one place. Um, all the books in here are uh, classified as they are in the survey, and um, it's interested in books.swansea.ac.uk. And also provides uh, a cover image of each of the books as well, so it's a good place to see the books and just see what we covered. Um, a few more recommendations then. So, on to the academic and textbooks uh, classification. <coughs> so, here we have um, eight books. So, these are predominantly aimed at students um, or people in academia. So, they tend to be more technical than, the, than some of the other books, um, provide good background information on why things are as they explain. Um, for example, here we have the um, uh, Collingway. Um, Perception book, which is probably the best book in the field perception, which is uh, highly recommended for any students in visualization really, so they can see um, things, what should they so consider from a perspective point of view. Um, also, Ward's book, um, Ward and this associates the uh, interactive data visualization book. Um, I find it personally very useful as a uh, PhD candidate to provide some information on. Uh, Really. And then some of the other books we have here provide uh, good insights into and uh, how to perhaps form your visualizations. Um, then some recommendations in our books to classify as industry professional. So these differ from academic as they either say that they aim to more rights. Um, people working in industry who perhaps need to just create a graph to present to a manager. Um, they perhaps don't actually give a background of uh, why they, one type of graph is better or whatever, <coughs> just kind of like explain how they can be done more than anything. So we've highlighted a few here. Um, uh, Stephen Fields' books are uh, in here. Yeah, I think he specifically says they're uh, for an uh, industry audience. Um, Storytelling with Data by Nathlet is a very interesting book there. And, uh, Stands out in metadata as we'll see later. Um, this is the other books we have there. Um, the Visual Organization by 
Phil Simon is a fairly interesting one. It um, provides insights from uh, businesses that utilize it, uh, data visualization, um, particularly Netflix, and how they use it to leverage their data and find insights and then adjust their business practices um, according to it. So uh, that's quite an interesting read. Um, then we have our specialised books. So these are books then that are uh, highly specialised. So uh, not for a general audience at all, or perhaps only of interest to those looking for um, something in that particular field. For example, the uh, network analysis, the, uh, the Brath book is uh, one for um, for users. Um, and then we've highlighted the illuminating the path there. Um, which is the visual analytics. It should be, it's almost a classic, it's a classic in some sense, but I think we can find classics as over 20 years old, so that didn't quite make it in. Um, but it's, in, <laughs> it's a very complex book. These tend to be more complex subjects, really, is that um, uh, for a specialised audience. I um, should also mention we have the, uh, the colour book there, the um, Applying colour theory to digital media is another very useful book well, for colour, but we stand with that here because of its uh, specialist focus. So, yeah, we have, I think, um, yeah, 11 books in total in this section now, so this is almost the uh, everything else, as it were, then. So, we move on to some of our metadata. It's a bit small and difficult to see here. Um, but uh, I'll explain it to you. So on the y-axis here, we have a number of Google citations, Google Scholar citations, and on the x-axis, we have an Amazon sales rank. Um, that's a logarithmic scale there, so I think we have um, a thousand lot in here, and up to what's that, 10 million at the top there. Uh, so Amazon sales obviously don't necessarily uh, reflects reality because uh, they don't cover libraries and things like that, but provides some interesting insights. So, uh, some of the ones that stand out here, I got the point here. So, this book up here at the top um, is uh, Tufti's uh, first book, his um, quantitative, um, uh, what's called, uh, visual display of quantitative information. So, we can see that's uh, very highly cited and is one of the better sellers of the books we have here. Um, I think this graph is slightly out of date now in that it's, uh, I think it's 12,000 at the top here now, but I looked uh, the other week and that book is now over 12,000 citations on um, Google Scholar. And then we have the other Tufty books then, we have this one here and here, which are also Tufty books. You can see they all um, have over 2,000 citations. Um, some of the less selling ones then we have um, Colin Weir's perception book here, which is the uh, third most cited book, but in terms of sales rank, it's uh, significantly lower. So, interesting in between uh, perhaps what the general public buy and uh, what uh, gets referenced by uh, academia. Um, Bert Hans' book is here then. And then, some interesting ones down here is this one here, which is the storytelling with data by Nathalie. So we can see, I think uh, last time I checked, it had about 100 citations, but it's by far the best selling of these books on Amazon. So I find that quite an interesting insight, really, that um, storytelling perhaps is not um, valued so much within the uh, data visualization community, that it doesn't get the citations, despite the fact that it's one of the better selling books. Um, so. Yeah, I just found that an interesting insight for me. And then we got the others then distributed along the bottom. Um, uh, so, yeah. Um, then we uh, just have the uh, Amazon review scores. This is something of interest more than anything. So, uh, on the uh, y axis here, we have the number of reviews provided on Amazon.com. And on the bottom, we have the actual review score, so that's uh, out of five star, and they tend to go down to one decimal point. So, um, of the books then that have a review, we've kind of put them all together here. So, uh, it's all good to see that they're all over 2.5 on the uh, scale, which is uh, so it's always a good thing. So, again, the uh, interesting ones are the ones, the, the outliers. 
So uh, the two we have up here, so the ones with a fairly high score and high number of views is again the, the Tufty book and the Naflet book, uh, Storytelling with Data again. So you can see it's highly uh, well received um, and has a lot of reviews despite being a, a, a lot newer than the Tufty book. So you can see those two clusters out there probably stand out in the field. Kind of almost highlights again what the question why the Naflet book perhaps has a less uh, citations. Um, and have a look down here is uh, we have some of the, uh, the ones, the lower score ones, which have perhaps more values in this field. So we have the uh, uh, Connie Weir book, the perception book here, so I think with the uh, lowest standards on score. Um, but I think that might be a more reflection on perhaps the Amazon audience. Um, they were, uh, I think one of the reviews, I think uh, it noted here, was just said, uh, I was way more technical than I was expecting. So um, I think it's more for an academic audience rather than a general uh, uh, Amazon audience. And same goes then for um, uh, the information uh, data visualization book by um, uh, Ward and his associates. So that's the two lowest scores. Um, the two highest scores we have in here are. Um, uh, oops. Uh, I think it's the visualization of time by Wells and um, uh, gra uh, graph race clustering by Vathy Bagsy. But uh, I think these only have uh, one review each, so I think it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Uh, I think Amazon have uh, changed their policy a bit. I think uh, some of these one review books have been moved now. I think, uh, issues with the Amazon review scores that have been recently this slightly older, so uh, this provides an interesting insight. Um, onto some numerical analysis then, so um, here we have the books labelled along the bottom, each bar represents a book, and then we have along the side just a stat bar chart with a number of uh, figures, pages and references. So we have the references in green, pages in red, and the figures in blue. So the one that stands out immediately is the first one, which is the Bertin book. Um, so it has a high number of figures in it more than any of the others. Um, and all sorts of numbers, so it doesn't have any references to anything else. Um, being like a, an early book in the field, there's less to reference really, and it's a bit of a pioneer, so I don't think there's many things to reference. And the images in the book is they tend to be self-made, um, so they there's nothing to reference on that front either, really. Um, some of the books with the highest references then um, are the more technical books. So we have the Colin Weir book again here, which has the most number of references, which is, as you expect, it's a scientific book on perception. And also the uh, War Definition Data Visualization book, that's another high uh, number of uh, references. Uh, and also a high number of pages in both of them as well. Stands up in more technical nature, really, in the, uh, towards uh, the academic audience. Um, some of the lower level books here, I think this one here, was a spring and brief book, so it was designed to be a lot shorter, so that stands out a bit. Um, but it's just a, an interesting thing to see the um, spread of um, uh, number of pages and figures and references across the books, really. Um, just want to discuss some supplementary material that come with the book. So um, a few of these books we noticed um, uh, provided some supplementary material. So we thought we'd collect them to see uh, to see what we had. Um, not all of them had anything really, but um, we see some of them. Uh, we noticed a contrast that a lot of them tended to supply material on websites. So they provide a link to websites, and often these supplementary material then would be either bits of code for technical books. Um, data sets, uh, things like that. Um, uh, and, oh, and then, come down with contrast then, with some books then that provide a physical media, so a CD or a DVD. Um, so, again, they tend to have the same sort of thing, either tools or data sets, um, uh, or extra images. I think some of them had some images you can play with to test perception between two different is kind of spot difference, I think, which was uh, I think so. um, And some actually provided physical data sets in the um, MCs as well. Um, so 
we've kind of worked out what's the difference between CV and the websites. The websites tend to be more modern. But however, we found that um, some websites, um, especially the website with the Illuminate in the Path there, um, has expired, so it's no longer available. So um, it's kind of a bit strange thing which one's the best. Um, whereas the CVs, uh, well, the other, day, the other week we actually had a book with the CV and we actually accessed the CV ourselves, really, so something a bit more permanent, but perhaps not more useful. As well as if you can find a CD drive these days, uh, it can be quite useful. <laughs> Um, just a little bit back to the topic distribution then, so uh, how we, um, uh, across the um, different classification of books there. So along the y-axis there we have a number of pages dedicated to each of the topics we have along the bottom, and then the colours um, just show um, which, uh, which classified areas on the uh, top is cover. So the, the big standout there is the visualisation design, which basically the topic itself really is almost like actual like discussion visualization design. I guess uh, some of the more interesting ones there are the ones that are quite low. So we have a presentation and animation here is uh, how we um, the, the discuss it all in most of the books here. Um, aesthetics and people in visualization here, aesthetics especially tend to be there's a very orange color here, which is the general audience uh, book. So Aesthetics aren't concentrated so much on in the more technical books, which we find very interesting. Um, uh, glyph based visualization was something that was only um, uh, discussed in textbooks and was generally avoided by your more general audience books we found as well, which is uh, uh, really interesting. And then I um, want to talk about uh, some of the tools discussed in these books. So uh, this table we have uh, a list of tools, and it's not very clear on here. Along the top there we have uh, the, um, the tools that were discussed the most. So we've got Excel, Tableau, Google Tools, D3 Processing, and Adobe Illustrator. And we have an X then indicating that uh, the uh, tool was discussed or mentioned in the book. <coughs> Anything discussed in more detail uh, is indicated by a number, which is uh, used as a heat map again. So we see down here, uh, visualizing data by uh, Fry is a book discussing processing, so it stands out in red because there's a, a, over 100 pages discussing processing, and that's the purpose of the book. Um, so you can see that Excel is kind of the tool most mentioned, um, which we found very interesting, followed by Tableau, perhaps more modern. And then in the uh, other tools, we just have a, a list of the tools discussed generally within these books. Um, anything in bold, then again, is something that uh, give more detail, perhaps of some code um, that people can be created with the, uh, uh, the visualizations with. So, I just want to discuss some future work for it. So, um, we concentrated here, as Bob mentioned, only on the information uh, visualization books, but um, this future work can be expanded into scientific visualization books. Um, that's another probably very interesting path for this community. Uh, infographics is another uh, section that we uh, well, excluded and uh, something that we could include in the sending more general audience name that um, list, so the, like McCampbell's book, uh, information or something like that. Um, geographic information systems is a large topic in itself, um, especially going on to um, GIS tools such as ArcGIS or QGIS and all those, so that's a huge topic there. Um, and individual tools here again, as well mentioned, um, Excel books, you could write a survey on them yourself, um, D3 and all these sorts of things are highly, um, yeah, there's a lot of books on all of them really. And uh, yeah, uh, as well as that, then a um, the survey on the new books that are being published all the time, this is a very well out of date. Uh, over a year old now, this, uh, our work on this, so um, there's a few more books in the field um, that um, could be added to it. That concludes our talk, so I'd uh, like to thank you for listening and ask if you have any questions.
Thank you very much. I actually have three questions. Okay. The first one is, um, was there any book that's heavy on the diversity of applications? Is there any book that mentioned multiple number of application areas? Um, um, nothing that jumps to mind, but um, the um, Matt Ward and um, uh, this associate's book, I think it's very wide reaching information visualization. We concentrated specifically on information visualization um, as opposed to some other sectors, and that covers the topic, the whole theme, fairly well, I feel, and it's quite a lot of detail as well. Um, some of the books that perhaps could have included that I use myself is the Taleya book, uh, it's, it's, we find is um, we, we discounted that so as we figured it was more scientific, really. Um, that's another um, book that I would probably uh, say is uh, fairly wide. Uh, which in terms of its few um, topics it covers. Great, so they do exist. Yeah. Okay. Which, which, which applications are you interested in? Are you interested in a special any, well, anything? What, from medical to engineering to art mm -hmm. um, to economics, of just covering a, a diverse um, group of applications. Mm -hmm. I see some of the books that are focusing on the application of a particular tool rather than coming from the point of view where we have these different applications, what should be the general framework for the information utilization That's why the, the books are kind of divided in, in the sense that they usually focus on InfoViz or SciViz. So I, we, there's no book that, that really is trying to cover both in, in equal portions. So your applications that the applications you mentioned sounded a little bit more towards the side is side. But in those topics, there are also information visualization topics too. I just want to write down. Um, my, I'll just give my second question. The third question I have is, um, do you recommend um, like a triology? If we could mix and match these books, do you recommend something like a triology or to prepare students for their PhD students. What would be the first one? What would be the second one? What would be the third one? To kind of lead them on to understand, first understanding about the cognitive science portion. Yeah. Then what's the second one? What's the well, I would, I would recommend this survey. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no,
You mean yeah. this this particular survey? <laughs> that doesn't make me feel that good. <laughs> but yes, that that I, that would be a fun category. I, I think <coughs> a fun hole to fill, in my opinion. And like Dylan also mentioned animation. However, I would be very hesitant to say this because for me that's a computer graphics topic, and mm -hmm. I, I guess that there are computer graphics books that cover that in depth. But um, yeah. Aesthetics and look at this table. <laughs> <laughs> you know what they are? Did you know how that's a conclusion section of the play? It's there, I can't remember it though. I just. Do you have any other wishes? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah, so, so, uh, so, 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 um, I think it, it gave me a very good grounding on the fields, honestly. I, I, I did read most of them, even if it was just skimming some of them, but I, I would say I did read every single page. Um, I mean, I did definitely it gave, gave, gave me a good grounding fields and what's out there, what's available, and it's kind of like seeing what's there. And then the problem is, you know, you read a book and then you read another book and you kind of merge into one and you kind of forget some bits and then some bits stick around a bit more than others. So it's almost an information overload a bit, but um, the good thing is that we have a summary of each of the books in the survey itself, so it's like, oh, which one was that? We can almost find it in the survey itself again, really. So uh, the work's done now, we uh, easily got that again. So, so I guess my question, yeah, that's a bit silly, but. I'm going where Sylvia's going. I I want to I want to know I want to write another book. Yeah. So what book should I write? And I think I think it's really good. I mean I, I mean I'm really pleased with this. I really like it. I think it's a really really good stand, starting point. Yeah. But I'd like to know a little bit more about the area from a book's point of view, from a subject, in a little bit more detail. Maybe that's the next paper. Um, really sort of sitting down and trying. Because I can see the, the, the publishers wanting to, I mean, they, they do this all the time. They, they do this by sending out reviews of the proposals to people, to academics like themselves, saying, is this really needed? Uh, and in a way, you've got some of that data there which could be used in this way to try and steer some of those decisions, or even maybe help, help us out the communities. It's us, the community, who are writing these books. Um, I know, know the books have increased, but so has the amount of people using D3 and other tools around the world, and they have no understanding of what's going on in the globalization community. It's our duty to get around their right books. Uh, and I think that's if we can, if we can have help from guys like you making a survey to help us to know where we should put the next book. That's, that's where we're going. So maybe, maybe what you should do, a group of us interested in that, sit down, look at what you've done as a starting point, maybe put some maybe, maybe put a website up. Anyone thought about writing a book on blah blah blah? We haven't done this. Exactly. Well, we don't want to give away all our secrets, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, here's a free one. Knowledge is free. You want the first? A Flowbiz book. As far as I know, there is no Flowbiz book existing in, in terms of. There you are several. Right yeah, I, I, that's been on my to do list for like more than 10 years now. <laughs> but there is no currently, uh, as far as I know, there is currently. With the exception, of course, of, there are several experimental flow viz books, but there's no flow viz book for, from the viz community point of view, so to speak. So that's that's waiting to happen. Somebody will do that at some point, you know, guaranteed. Any any more questions? And maybe one aspect is for some of the books that's been a time gap, right? Because you need it. You you also mentioned that some books, it's been a while since they've been around, since they've changed as new literature, some refer to. I mean, there are a lot of literature based sort of books, 
uh, and there might be maybe not necessarily yes, but there might be time for some revisions. Maybe you, you sort of uh, send emails to some authors. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a time for a second, a time for revisions. And, um, I think um, this action field has kind of progressed a bit since um, Conway's book. Really, there's a few more things since then. Really, so that that could sort of definitely be uh, dated with more uh, recent findings. Really. A survey of books would be a good book. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? Just one, one thing. I, would, I mean, you, you mentioned that Kennedy and Natalia's book was was not in that list. So that's you consider that as a GIS textbook. The the highest price one. The highest uh, price yes, one. Yes, that, that I would call that a GIS book. Yes, yes. That's, yeah. What would you say, Gennady? <laughs> 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 no, I, mean, no, I'm talking about a book that beats yours in terms of price. So, it, last time I checked, yours was around 200-ish euros-ish. But there's another book I found for 250. Oh. So it's called it, It's called something like the Handbook of Geospatial Visualization, or the Handbook of Geographic Information Systems. It's a big, big thing. Yeah. So there's one that beats yours. If, it, if it's any consolation, I don't know. <laughs> but oh, the other consolation is yes, we bought a copy of your book. That was the, an unusual aspect of this project, by the way. Is I happen to have a big collection, but we also happen to have a budget for purchasing a bunch of more books. So that's kind of an unusual configuration. Thank you. If there are no more questions, that's the whole last thing to say. Thank you very much. So enjoy the coffee before the last sessions of the day. Thank you. Yeah.